In fact, when we look at the world today and we look at the, the, way, that, the way that most people in the world today conduct themselves, uh, and maybe understandably so from, from a, a worldly way of thinking, that they don't want to engage in anything unless it's fun, unless they can get something out of it that is entertaining. And we see this in the religious world. We see all of the things, the, the, as it's been termed over the past 50, 60 years, fun and frolic within, within uh, religious bodies. People coming together, not just to learn about the scriptures and not just to uh, be together as the Lord desired his people to be together on the first day of the week or to get together midweek uh, as uh, is deemed proper by the elders in a local location to uh, build each other up and edify one another during the midweek time. You know, it, 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 there, there's more to it that people desire. Something which not, isn't even more, it's actually less. It's a superficial uh, need that is being filled, that need to have fun. But my point and what I want to bring across today is that joy is much deeper. And uh, on the way here, I had my uh, personal secretary in the, in the passenger seat Googling things uh, for me. And uh, you know, fun, according to the, uh, uh, where this one is, the Oxford English Dictionary, is said to be a enjoyment, amusement, or lighthearted pleasure. And that's what I think the world... Uh, most people today are really involved in wanting to have that lighthearted pleasure. Let's not get too deep on these things. You know, let, let's just keep it. Let's keep it lighthearted. Let's keep it pleasurable. Let's keep it fun. That's what uh, most people wake up, <clears throat> I think, and, and desire that their day go like that. That it's lighthearted and that it's fun. Joy, however, according to the same reference site, uh, says a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. And uh, underneath of that, in quotes, is tears of joy. Now, uh, I, I don't remember the last time I heard somebody talking about having tears of fun. Uh, you know, that, that's not, not something that we would uh, normally hear about. But joy is something that is much deeper. And that's what I want to look into. No matter how, uh, you know, and, and as Anderson, my son, pointed out, in the car today, as we were talking about this, continuing the conversation about this subject, uh, he, he was saying that, you know, but you can use those words the same way. And I think in, in our culture, in the way that the English language has, has changed over the years, I think we do use the word joy and, uh, and fun more interchangeably than perhaps they were originally intended. Um, as I pointed out to him, and, and the, one of the main points of the lesson here today is that, you know, things that, are, that bring joy. Now, I told him, Anderson, you bring me great joy, but right now, you bring me great pain because we weren't seeing eye to eye on the subject. And, and, that, that, and that's kind of the thrust of what I want to talk about today, that, that those things that are joyful often involve some pain along the way, some heartache, some work, if you will. Uh, although we understand that they do bring us great joy and in the end will bring us very much joy. So it, <clears throat> excuse me, in Luke 6, starting at verse 20, I want to uh, read there for a, a few verses here. Luke 6, starting at verse 20 says, Then he lifted up his eyes toward his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For indeed your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner their fathers did to the prophets." You know, when we're, when we're uh, looking at that and we realize that the proper uh, reaction to all these things we read in the first two verses up there, uh, in, in verse 23, tells us to rejoice in that day and leap for joy. 
It doesn't say we're going to have fun, but that we should be happy and that we should have joy realizing that we are, uh, that we are doing what the Lord has, des- has desired that we do. That uh, and when it says there, and they revile you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. You know, that, that's uh, something that should bring us joy. Now, it's not going to be a whole lot of fun because the, the, the people around us and the, the world persecuting, uh, persecuting the uh, Christians that, that put Christ out there and share the gospel with others. And, and maybe we've been called names when we've tried to share the gospel with others. Maybe that's been something that uh, has come about in your lives. We, we are fortunate in the here and now that we don't experience great persecution. We live a pretty comfortable life here in this country and at this present time. But we don't have to look too far to see that uh, those of the household of faith uh, being even persecuted yet this day. Uh, And we look back in history and see how many times that has happened. But yet, even if those things were to come upon us, we still have that joy that we hold on to, that hope that we hold on to Uh, of heaven after a while realizing that we are doing what the lord has desired that we do and it's all the more reason for us to study every day so as we continue thinking about this these contrasting terms of joy and fun and how i believe they should be uh contrasted in 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 most cases uh, although you know things that things that bring joy can be fun So I'm not saying that they can't be, but some of the most difficult things in life bring the most joy. You know, you think about the things that bring joy in our lives, childbearing. Anybody in this room that is able to bear a child, that has bared a child, I don't think they would call that fun at the time. But when you look at the end result, when you look at the wonderful life that comes into your life as a result of that, uh, I think that that would bring you joy. And especially if you bring that child up in the care and admonition of the Lord. We understand that there's going to be great joy in having children that also seek after the Lord. Now, in, in some cases, uh, it's turned out to be the opposite. When, when people don't follow the Lord and yet they, they continue to uh, raise their children and, and not teach them godly things, sometimes that can bring great pain and suffering in the, both the lives of the child and the parent. But child rearing is also something that brings great joy. As I, as I told Anderson on the way here, and I mean it, he brings me great joy every day of my life, as do all of my children. And anybody, any of you that are parents can think back on the times of raising your children and realizing what a great joy they brought you the 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 noise in the house you know i come from a a quiet household being the only child in the house it was quiet in my house it's not so quiet in my house anymore and i've come to cherish that i've come to yell across the house several times but i've come to to cherish and enjoy some of that noise from time to time. In fact, when our children are gone for the evening, if they spend the night with grandma and grandpa, it's eerily quiet in the house. And, I, and I've realized that I don't like that when, when that happens. So child rearing and, uh, and such, anything having to do with the having and raising a child can bring much joy, but we realize how much pain it can bring when they fall short, when we have to uh, reprimand them when we have to train them uh, sometimes those are painful things that we have to do in order to make sure that they stay on the straight and narrow path you know our baptism uh, is a time of great joy very, very much should be a great weight lifted off of us because we have been obedient to the gospel of Christ and understand what hope we have now because of that decision but along the way it in many cases it might not have been so fun to get to that point because perhaps along the way in learning along the way in studying the scriptures and understanding what the will of the lord is maybe you had to cut some ties 
maybe you had to realize that some that have very dear loved ones that have gone on before you didn't get to that point. And you realize the ramifications of such a thing. And that can bring, bring great heartache uh, in, in our minds. But uh, by and large, our baptism is a very joyful time. Maybe graduation from school. You know, I, I remember being very happy and joyful that I, that I uh, graduated from, from high school. Although, I wouldn't go back. You know, I, I understand the... Uh, the the uh, the time that it was and 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 there were hard times along the way, you know I had to take math classes and that wasn't a whole lot of fun, but uh, in in the end uh, I was I, I I had some joyful times, um, winning a soul over to the Lord, having that time to talk with another, to share the gospel and have them come to that realization through the word that. Yes, this is, this is the truth, and these are the things that, I, that need to be done. That brings great joy, but along the way, it might not be so easy for the same reasons as we talked about with baptism. I know that the, the, uh, the preacher that, that uh, ultimately uh, was the closer, so to speak, in, in my decision to be a Christian, you know, th there was some very direct speaking going on at that between us and that's what I needed but it wasn't a whole lot of fun there was some contention there until until all of those issues and thoughts were were hashed out and worked out to the point where there was an understanding there you know sometimes sometimes uh, we, we can have some uh, discontent along the way in winning a soul to Christ but understanding when that comes to fruition that that brings a great joy. And then those are joyful things. Fun things, though, you know, much more of the lighthearted nature, as we read in the definition, are playing games or playing with a child. As long as it doesn't involve board games, I, I'm on board. I, I, I can understand where that could be fun. Studying with the brethren can be a fun time. Travel can be a fun time. I, I do genuinely enjoy traveling from time to time. It is always good to come back home but I enjoy seeing other places, and it, it's fun, but I can't tell you that it brings me great, deep, fulfilling joy. Uh, watching movies or television, you know, those, those things can be fun. But again, that doesn't bring you great, deep, fulfilling joy. You know, when, uh, and that's the thing that we want to bring out today is that we want to be sure that the joy that we have in our lives is that deep, abiding joy that comes from our understanding of the truth. That joy that overshadows everything else. Or are we along for the ride of having fun? Are we here for the social interaction and the fun parts of being a Christian? As I said earlier, we live in a, in a time right now where we have great freedom and we have uh, comfort in our coming together. And uh, by all accounts, it can, I can say that it's fun. I enjoy coming together with each and every one of you every time that we do. And, uh, but that's not the reason we come together, to have fun and to have that interaction. We come together to build each other up, to be stronger in the word, to study, to have those hard times and one of us falls short, to be able to work with one another, to write the path of, the, of an erring brother or sister. That all happens as a part of these things. You know, we, we read in James 1, starting uh, verse 2, My brother, and count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. You know, when we fall into various trials, when we have that hope, when we have that focus just like Christ did of doing the Father's will. When we have that focus on, on heaven and the things after this life, all of those little things that happen to us in the world that cause us pain, the trials, the tribulations, you know, we, can still, we can still count those things as joy. We can still be joyful in those times. Not, not that we're having fun. 
And not that it's a joyful thing, but we can still have that joy because we understand who we are and we understand who Christ is and what he's done for us. Philippians 4, starting at verse 11, says, Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I think at the root of, of all of this joy is to put self aside and to learn to be content as is written here, to learn to be content in all things. You know, when we can find contentment in knowing the hope that we have, and that, and then that overshadows, again, all of those little things that might happen to us, even big things in our lives that happen to us that are not a whole lot of fun. You know, if we can learn to be content, put our selfish desires aside and not, not have that overarching need to be satisfied uh, at every turn, to have a comfortable time at every turn, but to be content and no matter what the situation brings. And that, that's going to open up a, a lot of doors for us in the, in the matter of uh, just living and having that uh, peace that we read about in the scriptures, to uh, even being a good, a good witness to others of Christ. You know, when you fall into, into a hard time, let's say you're, you're traveling and something happens and, and you find yourself in a bad situation, your car's broken down, nothing's going right, and then, you know, people in the local area, you know, come to your aid. If you're mean and frustrated because of, the, because of your current situation, if you can't get your head beyond that current situation and you can't be content in whatever state you're in, it's going to damage the cause of Christ. And insofar as people are going to look at that person, look at you and say, why would I want any of that? They're an upset person. They're, they're not happy. So uh, part of this counting it all joy of being, uh, having this true joy, this deep abiding joy, peace, it really comes from that, that uh, putting the self aside, being content, knowing knowing what we, what we have in Christ. You know, in Philippians 4, uh, just a few verses earlier, in uh, verse 4 through 7, says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known, be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, that you know, when we fall on hard times, when uh, you know, we read there in verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. You know, when we think about that word always, it means all the time. And so, you know, when we are having a hard time, we still need to be, be, rejoice and have thanksgiving in our hearts, being anxious for nothing. You know, that, that is uh, part of having that deep abiding joy. You know, joy is a fruit of the Spirit that we can read about in the Scriptures. You know, did you ever stop and think about the idea that joy is a fruit of the Spirit, but fun isn't? You know, just because a person's having fun, just because a person's having fun does, it has no, no, no uh, connection to whether or not they are acting in a godly way. Now, make no mistake, I'm not saying that it's wrong to have fun. And as I mentioned before, the, some of these things that, that uh, cause us great joy in our lives can be very fun, and they can bring uh, fun into our lives. But a life lived bearing fruit of the Spirit will bring enjoyment and uh, fun, so to speak. But fun is not the fruit that God is looking for. He didn't tell us that we're going to have a good time the whole way through this walk. There, in fact, are going to be hard times. But uh, we still can have joy in those hard times. Not, not over the current situation. I'm not telling you that when, if you get your, your leg cut off in a machine that you're going to be happy about that. 
but you can still have joy. A joy that surpasses all of those things, even the missing leg. Galatians 5, starting at verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. Crucifying the flesh and those passions and desires that drive us, that drive us to do those fun things, the passions that, that drive us to indulge in all manner of, of fun things. You know, recently, uh, as you know, my family and I took a vacation, and, and as, as you're sitting there in the middle of South Carolina, you, you, you allow yourself to indulge in, in, in more fun activities than you would at home. That's the purpose of going on a vacation. You know, the, 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 those fun pursuits in life. But we still have to operate under self-control. We can't say, well, I'm so many miles away from anybody that knows me, I can do what I want. You still have to crucify the flesh with its passions and desires. And you need to still be Christ and be, be those that seek after him. How, how many fun pursuits involve a self-controlled attitude? You know, look at what is deemed fun in the world today. You know, drinking, drugs, partying, reveling, and all, all sorts of things that, that go on in the world. How much self-control is involved there? You know, when I, when I worked at uh, a concert venue and worked security, I saw a bunch of people involving in what, indulging in what they thought was fun. I didn't see a whole lot of self-control. In fact, very little self-control on the part of the people that were there. Now, God desires that we be joyful, having our hearts focused on his will. Sometimes that means happy, but all the time it means having that our eyes focused, our hearts focused on him and his will. 1 Timothy 2, starting at verse 3, says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's the purpose. That's the purpose we have as a Christian. That's the purpose that God has set forth for man, that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. That's where the joy lies. That's the purpose. The, the fun is just superficial. You know, joy is good for you. Proverbs 17 and verse 22 tells us a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Now, when we put aside the pursuits of our hearts and we live a better life here and in eternity, you know, when we, when, when we uh, seek a godly way, we understand that we're going to live a better life. I think that each and every one of us that are in Christ can look at our lives and realize how much better we have it since we've become a Christian since we've started to walk down that narrow path. There are things that we've had to put aside, some of which caused us pain. But our lives are better as a result of that decision. Now, many of our earthly and fun pursuits crush our spirit. I don't know how many times I've sat in front of, many times I've sat in front of a group of people teaching the remedial driving school, which involved... Uh, people that were getting their license back due to DUIs and, and drug abuse and all sorts of things. And I saw a lot of crushed spirits. I saw a lot of people who were at their wits end, who uh, didn't know how to operate even anymore because they just, they just couldn't make sense out of things in life. That's why they went down that rabbit hole of addiction. But uh, those fun pursuits, those fun pursuits end up crushing our spirit many times. When, when that's the purpose of our life is to have fun, our spirit ends up being crushed. But when our purpose is the Lord, to look for, to seek after that joy that only he can offer, then we become fulfilled. And in the end, we end up having fun along the way. The pursuit of fun is vanity. Ecclesiastes 2 Starting at verse 1 says, I said in my heart, come now, I will test you with pleasure. Enjoy yourself. 
but behold, this also was vanity. And if we read on a little bit, just to uh, just read on a couple more verses in verse 2 there in Ecclesiastes 2, it says, I said of laughter, it is mad, and of pleasure, what use is it? I searched with my heart how to cheer my body with wine, my heart still guiding me with wisdom, and how to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was good for the children of man to do under heaven during the few days of their life. I made great works, I built houses and planted vineyards for myself, I made myself gardens and parks, and planted in them all kinds of fruit trees. I made myself pools from which to water the forest of growing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had slaves who were born in my house. I had also great possessions of herds and flocks, more than any who had been before me in Jerusalem. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the treasure of kings and provinces. I got singers, both men and women, and many concubines, the delight of the sons of man. So I became great and surpassed all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. And whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I kept my heart from no pleasure, for my heart found pleasure in all my toil. And this was my reward for all my toil. Then I considered all that my hands had done and the toil I had expended in doing it. And behold, all was vanity and a striving after the wind. And there was nothing to be gained under the sun. When we pursue a life of just fun and frolic. When that is the purpose, that we be content in a fun time, every moment of our lives, we miss so many opportunities. If you're pursuing just fun and comfort in your heart, you're going to miss all the times when you can have a a discussion with somebody, even about religious things, about Christ. Now, many times we understand how sharp the Word of God is, sharper than any two-edged sword. When you start talking about those deep things with another person, people are going to be cut to the heart, just as they were on the day of Pentecost. And that's going to bring up a wellspring of emotions, perhaps. And that might not be comfortable. But if we, if we avoid that, we'll never, we'll never get to that point where we can help a soul gain heaven so i ask you to think on these things today hope it made sense to you you know joy and fun they just aren't the same thing we need to seek after that joy in our lives the joy that can only be had through christ and of course we need to share it with others are you subject to Christ's invitation today you know looking about me here as i look about me i believe every one of us here has been obedient to the gospel of Christ. We've heard the word and believed and repented, confessed, been baptized for the remission of our sins. And that leaves us with remaining faithful. Have you been faithful to the Lord? Can we be of assistance to you? Can we be a support one to another in a time of trouble? That's what we're here for. If you're subject to the invitation, don't hesitate. Please come forward as we stand and sing. Oh, my God.